As I detailed yesterday, this week has been a welcome break from the monotony of the summer doldrums, like news cycle. That's because yesterday there were not one, but two big events held by European automakers focusing on the future of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles. Those two companies, Volvo and Renault. Their two separate events were a few hours apart, something that certainly kept us all on our toes. And yesterday we covered the Volvo event in detail something you can find out more about by watching this video. There's also a link in the description. So today I'm going to go over the Renault event with a similar fine-toothed comb. Called the Renault E-Ways Electropop Conference, this two-hour online event laid out Renault's electric vehicle roadmap, which promises 10 new electric vehicles over the next decade, a new battery partnership or two, and a cemented commitment to Renault being primarily an electric vehicle brand by 2030. It also confirmed that two of Renault's most iconic models, the Renault 5 and Renault 4, are returning as all-electric cars. Starting the conference, Renault CEO Luca De Meo detailed how Renault plans to restructure its European manufacturing facilities. Combining three of its existing plants in northern France under a new legal entity called Renault Electricity — yes, I know it's a terrible pun, don't blame me — which will form the heart of Renault's electric vehicle push. Joined by a brand new battery gigafactory capable of making 24 gigawatt hours of battery cells per year by 2030, as well as a partnership with Vercor to produce an additional 20 gigawatt hours of cells per year by the same time frame, Renault says it will create 700 new jobs across France by the end of 2024, specifically for EV and EV support industries. Add in the recently confirmed partnerships inked earlier this week with AESC and Vercor, and Luca de Meo says a total of 4,500 EV industry jobs will be created as part of the brand's shift to an electric future. And the shift to in-house and partnership battery production should also insulate Renault from the same issues that many automakers have experienced recently, namely the battery companies that are independently making cells, charging extremely high prices for cells, and then regularly playing one customer off against another to batteries. Unlike many automakers, Renault seems to be focusing on the continuation of its current cell chemistries, with nickel manganese cobalt (NMC) cells likely to form the backbone of Renault's vehicle lineup for many years to come. In fact, the company says it expects the chemistry will cover 100% of all of its battery electric vehicles across all segments and, quote, across 1 million electric vehicles alliance-wide by 2030. That alliance, in case you're unaware, is the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance, hinting that Nissan and Mitsubishi are also playing it conservatively when it comes to cell chemistries. That said, I think it's important to note here that NMC cell chemistries are still being improved in terms of energy density and power density. The downside, however, is that NMC batteries tend to contain more cobalt than NCMA chemistries, which use aluminium in the cell design to reduce the cobalt content and LFP batteries, which contain no cobalt at all. Renault says it's chosen NMC chemistries because they deliver a, quote, comparative ratio of cost per kilometer, with up to 20% more range compared to other chemistry solutions. It also pointed out that it believes NMC is easier to recycle than some other chemistries being used today. By 2030, Renault says it hopes to have reduced its battery costs by 60%, with a target of below $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level by 2025, and under $80 per kilowatt hour at the pack level by 2030. Having cut the cost of battery packs in half over the last decade, Renault says it will do the same over the next. At this point, let's make sure that we differentiate between cell and pack level quotes, because very often companies in the industry quote cell level costs because they're easier to achieve. Pricing at the pack level means that all the required cell casing and battery pack casing is included in the price, in this case, the structural batteries that Renault's moving to, as well as power electronics and battery management. Long term, the company says it's planning on launching solid state batteries around 2030, which frankly ties in with the timeline that many other automakers are sharing for their solid state programs. So let's look at powertrains. Renault says it's continuing to use rare earth free motors and is working to introduce new motor breakthroughs from 2024 onwards into the electrically excited synchronous motor designs it currently uses. These will include a glued motor stack, brushless and hollow rotor shafts, and stator hairpins, and says the company will provide dramatic cost savings. 
Unlike Volvo's presentations yesterday, which presented a fully electric lineup for 2030, Renault says it's continuing to develop its hybrid drivetrains and says it's been working with Wylot, a French startup, on an axial flux motor that it will use in its hybrid cars from 2025. One of the things that has stood out about the Renault Zoe hatchback over the years is its fully integrated power electronic system that used inverters from the motor controller to allow the car to charge from a variety of different AC power sources with impressive flexibility. Although it did mean some efficiency losses occurred in those early cars, those early Renault Zoe's charging flexibility was certainly a big deal for many European customers. Moving forwards, Renault says it's working towards a new single unit that combines high-power DC to DC, motor inverter and charger, something many automakers are now capable of producing. The unit will be capable of operating at both 400 volts at the pack level and 800 volts. This means, like most other mainstream brands, Renault will be capable of using 4 and 800 volt rapid charging stations. The next step on from this, Renault says, is integrating all of its power electronics into a motor housing to have a single unit that takes care of everything, including a reduction gearbox, to produce a more efficient and compact drivetrain. Renault says its single package will be the equivalent volume of the current Renault Clio fuel tank, saving 30% over its current electric powertrains, be 45% more efficient, and increase range by up to 20 kilometers, 12 miles, on the WLTP test cycle. At the heart of the new single combined unit will be a new ultra-efficient silicon carbide and gallium nitride power electronics, which operate far more efficiently than power electronics of old. These new powertrains will be part of Renault's new lineup of vehicles, a total of 10 new electric models in the next 10 years that will be built on Renault's new CMF EV and CMF BEV platforms. Renault says its new C and D segment cars, equivalent to US compact and midsize, will be capable of up to 580 kilometers, 360 miles per charge. Developed jointly with Renault and Nissan engineers, Renault says that the vehicles will include, quote, a state-of-the-art thermal management system, suggesting that both companies are clean to move away from passive battery cooling in future cars. The first car to be built on this platform will be the upcoming Renault Megane E that's due to launch in Europe next year. For B-segment cars, a size that's closer to subcompact in the US in comparison, Renault says the BEV platform it's developed will reduce the cost of manufacturing by one third compared to the current Renault Zoe. Given the fact that the Renault Zoe is already one of Europe's most affordable electric cars, this is big news, and admits Renault this is the brand's push to make electric vehicles truly affordable for everyone. While we don't have firm specifications to go off, Renault hints at a 100 kilowatt, which is about 136 horsepower drivetrain, paired with a battery pack capable of up to 400 kilometers, 248 miles on the WLTP test cycle. It will also be the first car from Renault to feature plug and charge, a system that allows for seamless payment integration at compatible charging stations, making refueling as easy as just plugging your car in. The first car to debut this is the upcoming Renault 5. Yes, the name is returning as an all-electric car that's evocative in its design of the original Renault 5 Turbo from the Group B rally classes of the 1980s. The Renault 5 EV, which we first saw earlier this year as a concept car, is now confirmed to enter into production at the Renault Electricity in the near future. It will be followed by the Renault 4 Ever, yes, that's another corny throwback name to the Renault 4, which Renault says will be a compact crossover due sometime before 2025. Finally, Renault, like most other automakers planning future lineups, is keen to add V to G capabilities to its future vehicles. Citing interest from many European energy companies, Renault says customers who keep their cars plugged in for eight hours per day, an easily achievable figure for those with off-street parking and charging, could make upwards of 400 euro per year from V to G power transfer. Renault notes this is potentially going to be of big interest to fleet operators who have predictable routes to their vehicles and who may have their vehicles parked up for more than eight hours a day overnight. And because Renault has been manufacturing electric vehicles in series production volumes for nearly a decade, it's not only got more experience in EV manufacturing than some of its competitors in Europe, but it also has a more direct need to focus on battery recycling earlier than many others. As a consequence, Renault laid out its plans for an expansion in Second Life battery programs that repurpose used electric car batteries in stationary battery storage projects across Europe. It says, thanks to existing telematics with customers' cars, it already is ready to refurbish batteries and has plans for more than a quarter million Renault Zoe leased batteries that are soon going to need Second Life recommissioning. 
So far, Renault says that it's recycled 75 megawatt hours of batteries, one half of which were recycled last year. It predicts that its refactory project could generate more than 1 billion euros of turnover by the end of the decade, something that of course becomes an additional revenue stream for the automaker. So what do I think of it all? Well, while Renault's presentation isn't quite as fully committed to electric as some of the others I've seen this year, and frankly I am disappointed to see Cobalt playing a major part in Renault's future battery gap chemistries, I do believe that Renault will make good on its promise of making an affordable electric vehicle that is on price parity with the cheapest internal combustion engine cars it produces today. As for the electric Renault 5, I am really excited to see how close it gets to its hot hat origins with this new vehicle. Hopefully Renault will keep much of the styling of the concept, and I think if it's got the beans it will sell, even if its range might end up on the low side. Which brings me to the matter of range. Many non-Europeans may watch this and scoff at some of the lower side figures I've mentioned today, but remember that for many customers in Europe, a drive of an hour or more is considered a long road trip, and something that's more than a few hours is normally a day-long expedition. That is, unless you're planning a super-fast autobahn road trip, but that only applies in Germany. The TLDR? I think Renault's push to more affordable EVs will pay off, and in tying with the Gen X fondness of its classic names of old, well it just makes these cars more desirable. What do you think? That's it for today, please do hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't yet, as it should make sure that you don't miss out on our videos. And make sure you do the same to our other two channels, Transport Evolved Take Two, and if you're in a hurry, Transport Evolved Shorts. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, that's Andrew Martin, Guido Rahoa, Brophy Wolf, Anonymous Freak, Raging Fellows, Carl Hodgson, Gordon C, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, and Tazla in the Gong, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. You can chat with the team and TE fans over at Discord. And don't forget, we're getting very close to our 1,000th Patreon supporter. And when we do, we have some ideas on how to celebrate. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.